Welcome to the Running Network Show. Join us each time as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great sport. We have running tomorrow runners from 55 different countries here in Toronto. How amazing is that? How amazing is that? Probably some of you have come here from the U.S. or Europe or South America or Africa or Asia, I don't, maybe Antarctica, who knows? But wherever you're from, a warm welcome to the city of Toronto. So very briefly, let me introduce you to the guests at our head table to my immediate right is the editor-in-chief of Runner's World magazine, Mr. David Willey. <laughs> to David's right, would you please welcome the lady who is going to talk about the most important aspect, as far as I'm concerned, how to take control of your mind. The Psyching Team founder, Dr. Kate Hayes. <laughs> Next to Kate is the legend, the luminary, would you please welcome four-time winner of the Boston Marathon, four-time winner of the New York City Marathon, Bill Rogers. <laughs> Next to Bill is someone far better looking. Would you please welcome the first woman to run the Boston Marathon, author Katherine Switzer. Next door to Catherine, behind every good woman is a good man. No? I certainly agree. Would you please welcome runner, writer, and historian, Roger Robinson. And at the far end of the table, a different area code, would you please welcome the founder, Mr. John Stanton. Please welcome Mr. David Willey. Thank you very much, Herbie. Uh, it's great to be here. It's great to be in Toronto. As Herbie said, uh, the, the magazine is here. There are 10 editors who are running tomorrow, uh, a few running the full, and a lot of us running the half. I'll be running the half marathon. And we're here with about 100 of our readers. Some of them are here. I recognize a few of you guys out here. Uh, and it's great to be in Toronto. We've had a great time in the city, and I'm really looking forward to a great race tomorrow. Thank you, David. Would you please welcome Dr. Kate Hayes. Been talking with people today about what their goals are, and some people are certainly setting some time goals. Um, I'm hoping that what you're doing is also giving yourself a bit of leeway. If you're setting a specific time goal, are you allowing yourself to recognize that that's really going to be dependent on what your training has been, how you digest tonight's dinner, how you sleep tonight, how you're feeling tomorrow morning, what the weather conditions are, all of that stuff. And you may need to be doing some adaptations. You may want to. And in fact, you may want to set three levels of goals. The one that you thought was the one goal. That may be a really excellent goal. One that you really think would be pretty good might be a little bit lower, and that would be fine. You could end the race feeling a real sense of accomplishment. The third level, which I sometimes think is the most important one, and that is, I could live with myself if. Because you want to finish that race really recognizing what an extraordinary accomplishment you have done. He's run over 60 marathons, okay? That's amazing. Hundreds of road races, including the Canadian Ironman and the Hawaiian World Championship Ironman competition. Would you please welcome Mr. John Stanton. The marathon is a celebration. Tomorrow they're gonna take your picture, they're gonna give you a medal. It's all fun stuff. It's what you've worked so hard for. And uh, my only advice to you is tonight, take a few moments, do the visualization, see that time. You know what time you want to run, what you want to achieve tomorrow. And the other thing I'd like you to do is take a few moments to set a new goal. Each one of you leaving tonight should have a goal for what you're going to do for next year. It may be another race, it may be another marathon. 
He made it be to run away from home with a, at a race and somewhere with a buddy to, to celebrate the friendship and relationship that you have. But pick something that's special to you and so that you don't lose your goodness. Tomorrow, number one thing, when you come down that finish line, I'm the announcer that will be calling your name and calling you as you come underneath there. And I'll pick on you if you don't smile. So put a big silly grin on your face and uh, cross underneath there. Give us a little wave as you come underneath that finish line and have a great time out there. Good evening. And he's the four-time New York City Marathon Champion, four-time Boston Marathon Champion. Give it up for Bill Rogers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, actually, uh, I'm, I'm not a 209 guy anymore, let me tell you. <laughs> not that you had to be told that. <laughs> that was a long, long time ago. And, and time is the, the great equalizer for all of us, you know, ultimately. It's a fascinating uh, challenge or, or way to live your life is to be a runner. Now, I'm not really a marathoner anymore, which I'm sort of jealous in a certain way <laughs> of all the marathoners, you know, because I remember those days, you know, when you, when you were, when you're into the marathon and you're, you're, you're exploring, you know, each race is different, you know, and, and can I run faster than what I've done so far and all these, you know, unique challenges in our sport that are so much fun. But also, you know, I want to salute my fellow panelists and everyone here has got, we all have it. We all love this sport. We all have different ideas and feelings, but they're all pretty much the same, you know. And I think it's because ultimately it's it's it's, it's kind of an ancient sport, foot racing and um, and long distance running, and uh, so we're just following in the footsteps of our ancestors going way back. That's really what you're doing. I want to salute you all, and uh, I see some of you in the crowd who I've met over the years, Rob Reed from Victoria and everything, who brought me into the Calgary Road Race years ago, and. You never forget some of the people you meet in the sport. It's the greatest sport in the world. Anyway, I'm going to sit down because we've got two more masters of the marathon coming up here that really have something incredible to, uh, to tell you. I'll see you out there in the morning. Have a great, great day. You know we're going to have a great day. <laughs> Give it up for Catherine Switzer. incredible year. This is uh, the 2500th anniversary of the Battle of Marathon in Greece, an event that changed the world and uh, created what we know as the marathon distance. All marathons are in the shadow of, of that first uh, event. It's a wonderful, historic, amazing event. Um, and, and, and as we run tomorrow, we're, we're all a part of this. And so Roger and I are going to Greece uh, in two weeks uh, to uh, me to run the Athens Marathon. And this is part of the story, uh, and to also to speak to a lot of the, the people who are going to be there. There are 900 Americans who are going, if you can imagine that, um, with 20,000 other people. And so we decided we would talk about some of the historic aspects. And Roger said, "Well, why don't you talk about?" The, the women in, in the, the history of the marathon. And I said, well, 2,500 years, our history, uh, that means w this is going to be a short presentation because we didn't figure for 2,450 years. So, um, and that's how it started with women. Uh, women didn't figure in, in the Battle of Marathon, and they didn't figure with Pheidippides running or whoever ran from Marathon to Athens. Um, it, it was ancient times, uh, and for many, many thousands, even hun and hundreds of years, certainly, um, women were busy at home having babies, and that was their job. It is only very, very recent history where women can take control largely of their biological destiny and pursue sport. I mean, it is, it is amazingly profound. The sport of, of women's long distance running is really um, less than uh, 100 years old. Roger is in demand in particular this year as a leading expert on the history of the marathon as it coincides with the 25th, 25th, how do you say that, 2500th anniversary of the Battle of Marathon. And that, my friends, will be his subject this evening. Would you please welcome Roger Robinson. Uh, just to summarize, 2500 years ago, exactly, just two days after the last full moon, so about September 27th, something like that in our time, the small citizen 
army of about 10,000 men from the, from the city-state of Athens <coughs> defeated an invasion force of at least 30,000 uh, from the empire of Persia. That took up virtually the whole of the, the modern Middle East, driving them back into the sea. And, a much, and, and that battle took place in the Bay of Marathon. A much later story tells of a messenger who ran from a battlefield, and then eventually it became this battlefield, uh, with the news of victory and exhausted from his journey and from fighting in the battle, cried Ninikikaman, uh, which, which means basically be joyful, we are victorious, or you know, have a great day guys, we sucked them, uh, <laughs> translated into English by the Pope Browning as rejoice, we conquer, best known life. And that heroic story uh, gave birth to our modern marathon. Thank you.